things that I'm going to do. The books are already in draft, and I hope to have this one out next, and then the next one following that will be what we talk about tomorrow. The purpose of this teaching, I want to reveal to you the mystery of the seven-day timeline contained in the Holy Scriptures that points to the season of Christ's return. And the reason we're doing this is first to promote, it, to, pro, to promote an awareness and to hopefully cause individuals to wake up from sleep and slumber. You remember those 10 virgins? They were sleeping and slumbering, okay? Many, and I wrote, I, I, I made notes to myself and you see them here, many have been consumed with the events of the world and are asleep to the things of God. I'm raising my hands. So I'm not talking about y'all. When I wrote this briefing, <laughs> I was just talking about Kevin. So now if you fit into that category, amen. If not, we're not talking to you. I had to wake up, I, you know, and with my love and desire for God, I, I found out there were areas in my life where I needed to grow. When I went through my divorce and there, I realized I wasn't as connected to Jesus Christ as I needed to be. And I set out to change that. And I think through that, I do know one thing. I think through doing that, God started giving me answers. He does say in the Beatitudes, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. And sometimes the Holy Ghost, I think you feel like he just asked me things in questionable ways of kind of funny. Kevin, how hungry are you? <laughs> okay. I don't know about you, but sometimes it feel like you go for a while without having a good meal. And this is also comforting. If you don't know what's going on, what Jesus said was going to happen, you would look at everything that's happening in the world and be shaken. But if you know what's in the scriptures, you're like, okay, God, you said it was going to come. That means your word is true and, and you're also here with me. Okay. I'm also trying to encourage us to consider returning to our primary purpose, which is saving souls. Jesus said, go and seek that which is lost. Go ye therefore into all nations, baptize, teaching them about Jesus, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And as I was talking with uh, Mother Holland, I hope she don't mind me using her name, I too tended to believe everybody in the church is saved, okay? <laughs> Everybody in the church, you know, they come here, they give, they attend, they sing, they preach, they do. Oh, they save. We ain't got to worry about that. We need to go out to the world. Mm -hmm. Hang around church long enough, you might find out everybody ain't quite saved. I think, and, and the other reason for this is if we don't focus on the purpose of saving souls, we might get distracted with a lot of things that could take our time away. And so Jesus says in Luke, when, when you see these things that I'm talking about come to pass, he said, look up, lift up your heads. Why? For your redemption draweth nigh. And I think that's where we're at now. I know COVID has, you know, people nervous, you know, there's some elements of fear in there and everything, but I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to show that this ain't, this is nothing yet for what's coming. And if we can't, manage the our emotions now and have faith now what are we going to do when everything starts falling apart and and you know and even if that doesn't happen think about world war one world war two we are blessed we didn't live to world war one we didn't live to world war two we didn't live to the vietnam war matter of fact we haven't had a really critical major world global conflict since the 60s and i and the people before us went through that and so I think there's some things that we should consider as we look at the day's events. I also want to just bring in an awareness of the times in which we're living through what's in the Holy Scriptures and what Larry said. This is the real thing. I really believe that it's urgent that we really focus on spending time with the Lord and learning to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. I think that's that's the only way we're going to survive this, Amen. you know. I think that's the way we keep from panicking, okay? And I think he's going to guide us and keep us. And I think culturally and socially, we've been lulled asleep, okay, from what our true purpose is. 
most people, when you say, are you going to church? They, we immediately go to the building. We, I'm guilty. <laughs> and so I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just having this awakening moment, sharing it with you to consider where we're at. And I begin to think, holy, I'm talking about a building, but the, the church is the ecclesia, the called out ones. It's a living entity. It's the living body of Jesus Christ. So I had to go back because it's so easy to be in a place where we think of the church as a building, uh, uh, as an organization, as an entity, and I'm not bashing them. They serve their purpose. They do what God wants them to do, whatever that is. But this is the, the, the New Testament is about us as an individual. And if all I do is think about going to the church and I never think about me as being the temple of God, the living body of Jesus Christ, and if I haven't taken accountability of what God is requiring for me, where am I really at? So, so these are conversations I had to have internally with me. And God took me back to Matthew, and I think it's going to come up in uh, Matthew, the, the, 20, the 16th chapter. He said, if you're going to come after me, you got to do some things. You got to deny yourself. <laughs> You got to take up your cross, sacrifice. You got to follow me. Okay, I'm not going to, this is just the introduction. I'm just going to, I'm just laying out some purpose things. God told me, Kevin, go back and focus on the kingdom. It's, it's easy to get focused on everything else, but Jesus came and introduced the kingdom, a living kingdom. Okay. So we, we want to learn to live with an awareness of the presence of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, them dwelling in us, the person of the Holy Ghost. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about our body being the temple. You know, if you think about your body being the temple, you can't just go do what you want to do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, you know, if, if, if you are the temple of God, still in just now, we can't be doing that. Because do, Jesus is in me. I got Jesus participating in robberies, okay? We can't be doing this stuff, okay? I got Jesus participating in my sexual, uh, my sexual escapades. Oh, I can't, he can't be doing that. Uh, um, you know, I'm, I'm talking, I'm, 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 I'm hurting my brother. I'm committing murder. I'm doing these things. And I'm involving Jesus in that. I think it's, I think it's, I think we don't want to think about the fact that Jesus is in us so we can go do what we want to do. Okay. <laughs> I'm just talking about Kevin. You ain't got to raise your hand and say amen. I'm just talking about me. And so now I want to be at a primary awareness that Jesus is in me. This verse right here is the one that really changed my mind because I was trying to be good without changing the way I was thinking. I don't know if any of y'all ever done that. I, I had a porn addiction. I tried to stop it doing it, but the thoughts were coming. I wasn't wrestling with the thoughts. I was just trying to wrestle with the action, okay? And whatever it is in your life. See, a lot of time we just need to be honest and transparent. A lot of time we run around like, I'm just so good. Oh, that ain't me. See, I, I it's like... Alcoholics Anonymous, until you acknowledge you have a problem, you can't get resolution. That's what repentance is. Repentance is acknowledging I have a sin problem and I need to get over it. In this verse, and then we're going to be getting into this. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but God describes wickedness. If you can see my mouse, not sure. But he says that every only and continually. So those are infinite words. Understand the power of this verse. This is why God wiped out the earth the first time. When he went and found David, what did he look for? A man after his own heart. I think, and I, for the longest time, I was consumed with what I was doing and not what I was thinking. And when God finally got my attention, see, God saw the thoughts Every imagination of the thoughts of man's heart was only evil continually. And that's why he wiped them out. Because that makes sense. He said, you should love me with all your heart, 
what nobody ever told me was it's the thoughts of my imagination, which is my heart. You remember he says in Proverbs 23 and seven, so a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now we read that scripture. I'm not sure we took it to part, but if you remember Proverbs 4, 23 and 24, he said, keep your heart with all diligence for out of it are the issues of life. I knew that, but nobody ever told me it was the imagination of my thoughts was the heart that God was looking at. Because if he was going to destroy, kill, destroy for sin, he would have just wiped out Adam and Eve and meet them in the garden and started all over. He could have wiped, he could have started all over with Cain and Abel. He could have started it over with any number of sins since then, okay? But he's long suffering. He's waiting on us to repent. Understand something. There's only, and, and if you if I, if if you think of something else, let me know. There's only one thing that God allowed and created in the universe that He does not control. Only one thing. That's the heart of man. He calls the stars out, the moons. He does all of that. He but he doesn't control your heart. He gave us the ability to choose and he wanted us to choose him. And because of that, we also had the option to choose evil. And how many times throughout the scriptures do we see God give a commandment? Somebody goes, man, that's not, we're, not, we're not going that way. We're going this way. Scatter out all over the earth. No, we're going to build a tower. We're going to heaven. We're going to make a name for ourselves. <laughs> it's in our nature to rebel against God. The influence of Satan. So we've been busy trying to have church, but God is saying, I, will, I need you to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And so that's where going forward, I focus my efforts that I want to first be renewed and then I want to encourage others to do that. Then I go the right way. Here we go. Mm -hmm. 